Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We're back! <laughs> yes, back with another episode. And um, yet again, I feel underdressed looking at my <laughs> wife over here. Um, you know. He's not underdressed, you guys. I, I mean, I, this is as much as I, you know, I keep it simple. I try to keep it simple. Y'all know, I'm glammy. I'm going to be myself. This is myself. I'm very Afrocentric. This is me. So I'm coming this way every time. And if you see me over here looking over to my left, y'all's right. I'm actually looking at my notes here. I wrote a lot of notes for this topic because. Yeah. Yeah. So we got um, a lot of notes for this topic because this is a very, 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 very important topic. It is. It really is, y'all. And the reason why it's important is because, well, you read the title. You know, people be struggling with breakups. People need help. People need advice. People need guidance. Yeah. And what better to, you know, get that advice from someone who has been through plenty of breakups. We both have. Absolutely. <laughs> um, for those of you that um, that know I also have a podcast with my best friend called Netflix and Heal. Um, there is an episode where I talk about um, the many relationships that I went through because I was a serial monogamous, which means I went from relationship to relationship to relationship to relationship. And I didn't know how to manage my emotions. I didn't know how to manage my heart processing breakups. But I had to learn as I got closer in Christ how to get through breakups. And now we're here to... You know, tell the story, tell our testimony and help you get through, especially if you're going through. Yes. So do you want to start off with your notes or do you want me to start off with mine? Um, well, first, let's delve into um, like, what is it that people deal with when they first go through a breakup? Like, you know, that initial shock mm -hmm. for some people that did not like, no, you're never going to leave me or no. It's oh, not we'll, over. we'll get back together. There's another chance that we may possibly in the future. And no, the, in some cases it has happened and it has worked out. You know, people do grow, people do change, but ultimately, you know, nine times out of 10. What is God's will? Um, yeah. Sometimes we are so quick to try to hold on to people and we look really crazy doing this, right? So imagine, okay, imagine this is my phone, right? It's my phone. Imagine this phone is spoiled milk and it stank and it's horrible. Imagine people see me walking around holding on to something that passes expiration date. Every time I bring it around, they can smell it. It is annoying. It's bothersome. And here I am holding on to it, still hold, trying to hold on to it, and it's past its expiration date. So mm -hmm. you have to understand, like, with breakups, that these people were seasonal in your life, and the season is up. So now it's time to process. Now it's time to move forward. And now it's time to manage your heart. Yes. So... Nine times out of ten, you know, you're not gonna get back with that person once mm. they once you guys break up. And then if you break up, get back together, it's usually that cycle of break up, get back together, break up, get back together. And it's back and forth, it's toxic, it no one heals, everybody ends up, you know, disliking each other because it's like a bunch of back and forth. And sometimes you can, you know, agree to disagree and, you know, mm -hmm. be friends afterwards, but it's you know, in most cases, it's best to just move on completely because yeah. there's so much that you, there's so much tying of the souls and which that's a soul tie. Um, what I mean by that is there's so much that you invest in a person and that in person and that, and in turn, that person invests in you. That's a lot of time and energy spent and, mm -hmm. you know, you can't, you can't get that back. So, you know, whenever you are in a relationship with somebody and it doesn't work out, like Britt said, it's like spoiled milk. Like you, you know, you don't want to keep holding on to spoiled milk. You want to go ahead and let it go and move on. And yeah, that's another thing I want to talk about, but we'll get on to the moving on part in a minute. Right. So um, first thing that I kind of want 
to let you know if you are going through heartbreak or you're rebuilding or you're in the stage where it's fresh, it's an open wound, you cry every day, you have these moments where you feel broken and you don't know what to do. This is the point where God is the closest to you. I know that sounds so crazy and you may feel like, well, I messed up so bad. This relationship was so horrible. How in the world can God even hear me right now? But scripture says, right, that God is close to the brokenhearted. It says when the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears hears and delivers them out of their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. So that means not only does he want to heal you, He's extremely close to you because you're so open and vulnerable and everything. So when you go through a breakup, think of it as rejection being protection that's moving you in redirection. Mm. So think of it like that. Um, God is protecting you from something. The heartbreak was already something that you walked into. And the thing is, is like, during your breakup is when all of a sudden you have this moment of reflection where you see the red flags that you ignored. Because God gave you discernment. God gave all of us this amazing discernment um, where we could kind of pick up things early on, but we tried to kind of give the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. And so you have to kind of keep that in mind. Like, okay, well, God, what was the lesson? And that's the biggest thing you got to remember. What was the lesson you learned um, and dealing with that relationship? Was it, what did you learn about yourself and what did you learn in dealing with people? And also did your relationship even invite God at all? Did it even give God any reverence or honor or anything like that? And so, you know, even I had to learn when I went through these series of breakups that I had to repent. Like, God, I am so sorry that I allowed myself to get that deep in. And on top of that, Y'all, I was sinning hard. Like I wasn't, these weren't no little bitty, tiny little oil. God looks at all sin the same. Mm -hmm. But it's the enemy that kind of separates sin by like category and say one sin is worse than the other. Y'all saw how I was in my little little Kim thing. But anyway, the point is, is like, I had to apologize to God um, for these relationships where I idolized it more than him. I put somebody in his place. And we do that a lot in relationships because we don't set boundaries or balance and everything. So, yeah. <clears throat> so the, the great points, very great points, you know, um, I, I actually wrote down a list of things. And very good on your list. yeah, because this this list, I feel as though, you know, if you you don't have to follow this list to the T, but because um, everyone's uh, recovery process is different. Mm hmm. But um, I wrote a, a list of things uh, this morning when I was uh, taking a shower. It was kind of, you know, that's my thinking time. Like I think we as men, we like to have our showers as like our thinking time. So we just have our moments where we can just, you know, it's in. It's in usually it's in the bathroom, either we're <laughs> in the bathroom or in the shower. It's just, a vulnerable place. <sighs> yeah. So, um. First thing that on my list was remove any physical thing that could represent a soul tie, such as gifts, music, yeah. clothing, pictures, etc. Okay. Those types of things, like say for instance, see this picture right here, right, mm -hmm. right over here. Yep. So that picture right above my head, right. Say if that was a picture of me and an ex. Boo. Right. Exactly. Boo. So that's like a constant reminder of what once was. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you it's almost like, okay, I'll give you an analogy. Right. When you're driving a car, right? Mm -hmm. The windshield is bigger than the rear view mirror, right? You're not supposed to be looking back. You're supposed to be looking forward. Ah. So in that case, you know, when it comes to breakups, you want to make sure that you're not focused on, Oh, what happened in the past? How can I fix it? Or how can I go back to, you know, my ex? No, no, don't go back to your ex. Don't go back to your ex. Yeah, please, please do not go back to your ex. Mm -mm. What? Y'all, okay, because listen, <laughs> whip, women, come on, let me, let me get, let me nitpick some of y'all right now. Lift some of these lace fronts up. Y'all do not go back to your ex. Stop trying to fix what God severed. 
God is trying to move you forward and here you are trying to move yourself back. Like you're digging, you're digging yourself deeper and deeper and deeper into the ground. God's trying to take you higher, but you're like, but God, I don't want to stay in the mud. And God is like, but you're dirty over there. You're broken over there. You're, you're messed up. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to heal you and take you to a new place in your life. And you're trying to stay stuck in what you feel like is a glory moment or an idolized relationship that you put over God. And God is trying to help you in your most broken place. And so women, sometimes we try to go find these little substitutes. Uh, Men too. You know, I think we all have had moments where we tried to substitute, you know, to substitute the pain. Mm -hmm. Um, It could be rebounds. It could be sex. It could be alcohol. um, Trying to, you know, substitute that pain instead of processing. Mm -hmm. And substitutions are a delay in the healing process. Yep. They are a huge delay. Like, you are slowing up your healing process. Look at a breakup like a physical injury. Like, imagine, you know, you broke your arm. Mm -hmm. It takes a while for it to heal. You have to give yourself the patience and time to heal, you know, until you get back to 100%. So take a break of like a physical injury that just takes some time to heal and stop trying to not only rush the process, but substitute it for something harmful. You know, getting back with the ex is like trying to pick up broken glass. You do more damage trying to pick up the pieces than what you do just sweeping and throwing away. That part. But yeah. That part. And instead of worrying about trying to get a sneaky link. You get, should be spending time with God, which brings me to my next point. Get the sneaky link. <laughs> Spend time with God. Yes. Allow yourself to be vulnerable with God. That looks like giving your burdens over to God. Tell God exactly what you're get, you're battling, you're struggling with, as well as your traumas. As yeah. well as your traumas. Like, be real with God when you come to him in conversation. Yes. Like, don't go to him and be all extra Gentile-like and, oh, heavenly father. Like, no, be real. God, I'm angry. I'm pissed. I'm mad. God, they cheated. I'm mad. God, and then for some of y'all that, you know, might have been the person that did it. God, I was so wrong. Like, you know, you have to be yeah. real with God. The same way that you would do a best friend. Imagine if God was sitting at the foot of your bed mm-hmm. and open up like a diary. Like, be honest and be real with God. Like, God, I was sleeping with them, getting down and busy, and now that I'm by myself, I'm horny and I'm not trying to be out here buying no toys, no nothing. God, you got to help me with where I'm at. God, listen, I've been doing, look, me and this crown royal, this Hennessy, we've been rocking together, but I'm trying to rock with you, so I need you to take the appetite out of my mouth because... I keep going back to it, but it's messing me up. I can't think Mm -hmm. straight. I'm depending on it. All right, God. Just like my fifth blunt, right? But like, I'm trying to get closer to you, but I'm I'm getting further away because I'm getting higher over there, but not up here. So you got to be real with God about where you're at in your breakup process of saying, God, I need help. Mm -hmm. I need you to clean up this part in my heart so I don't bleed on anybody else so I don't hurt anybody else but I want to be the best for me because I tried to be the best for somebody else and they broke me Mm -hmm. I broke me so yeah you gotta be real you gotta be real now the more you spend time with God the more you understand the sound of his voice Mm -hmm. for those who really don't know what God's voice sounds like it's very peaceful it's very calm it's very soothing it's not something that will startle you it's not something that will (laughs) no it's not morgan freeman it's not (laughs) it's not (laughs) it's not barry white it's not whomever you might think has a deep baseful voice it's a very calm and soothing voice it's almost unexplainable but it's very loving 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 caring Mm -hmm. so um and again you got to make sure that you because we're moving on to our next point. So you got to make sure that you cut all ties. No form of communication should yes. be had, should be revisited. Like Britt said, mm-hmm. no reconciliation, no closure. Because closure does the opposite. It reopens the wound. Right. And people are so <laughs> quick to be like, we need closure. No, nah, you don't. Well, I need closure. I need. What in the world could a person possibly say to comfort your pain as to why the relationship ended you want an excuse just to be able to see them again in hopes that they can feel the pain that you're feeling Mm. you're you're hoping that oh maybe i can get some form of revenge and that's the worst tells us (laughs) 
<laughs> Scripture tells us that vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. And in doing so, you heap coals of fire on his head. That, kill him with kindness is kill basically kindness. what this is saying. Yep. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. That's Romans 12, 19 through 21. So God is telling you, don't seek revenge on them if they hurt you. That don't mean get a Glock and call it and name it kindness. Don't, you don't mean kill them with kindness. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> and we so mean that's be, why. Yes, be nice. Be right. So in in that again, you don't need closure. God is the only one that can provide closure. God is the only one that can close your heart off, turn your heart away from that person. It's no self help book, it's no self enlightenment, it's no uh, chakras and stones and things like that Like first of all God never told you to use Those things God said for you to trust in him But I'm going to get off of that so the point Is is that when it comes to Closure God is the one that Closes that area off But you have to cut the Soul tie mm -hmm. for those of you That don't believe that soul ties are real um, Okay for People who go through a breakup When they see the person what happens? They're bitter. They're angry. They're frustrated. They try to find a way to be cordial. They go talk to some friends. Mm, I see your friend over there, your best friend over there and everything. There's a level of pettiness. There's uh, even an envy or jealousy if they see them with someone else. Why is that? It's because when you go and you have sex with someone, the souls are joined and connected. Hence people don't want to why. talk about they that. They don't want to talk about that, but that's exactly what happens. And the thing is, is people are so quick to say things like, oh, read the room, feel the energy in the room, but then don't want to believe in the spirit, the real spiritual things of, you know, of God. When people, when people have sex, and of course, you know, people don't want to talk about this. People can't stand when you call out their favorite sin. But guess what? Someone had to call out what mine were. And I had to go through a deliverance process. And so um, in reflecting over the breakup, you have to ask yourself, did I create this soul tie with someone? And if I did, God, deliver me and break it and sever it. But that comes with you getting rid of the items that pull that tie closer, that pull that, that, pull that part of you that cause your emotions to go crazy. And the reason why it's going crazy is because your souls are connected and the ripping of them is painful, meaning the emotional part of you that wants to keep it together to uh, please your flesh and not your spirit. And the thing is, is that's the reason why God wanted us to wait till marriage is because that was supposed to be the proper godly soul time. Mm -hmm. And this world, you know, pushes the agenda of sex. It pushes, yeah, you're supposed to sleep together to get to know them. You know, you're supposed to test the car out before you buy it. And there's nowhere in scripture where God ever instructed that. There's so many, you know, people that get hurt. So I'm going to tell you what that leads to. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what testing the car out before you buy it leads to. Yeah, you might think you know exactly what you're doing as far as, you know, you want to have your experience. You want to understand what the person is like in bed. Make sure you're not marrying somebody who's trash in bed. But I'm going to break something real to you. A lot of people don't want to think about, you know, what comes with doing that. When yeah. you have sex before marriage, it kind of taints your view of your spouse. Mm -hmm. So you don't really get to learn your spouse in marriage. You do to an extent, but yeah, if you're, you're already familiarized with your spouse before you have, you know, before you get married. So when you do have sex, you kind of go into it with expectations. And then right. especially if you had, you know, partners before, your, um, you know, your your spouse now. There's comparison. Yeah, there's comparison. There's a lot of rehashing of old things, revisiting the past. Remember what I just said about revisiting the past? You're supposed to be focusing on the future, not what's behind you. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be focusing on what you were doing with someone else while you're having sex some, with your spouse. And that's not what you want. So right. it's best to wait. Mm -hmm. And you can ask God to restore your mind and also to, to cleanse mm -hmm. your spirit. You can ask God to even wipe out every 
sexual connection that you've ever made to do a restoration and deliverance. I'm talking about a full spiritual detox within you that you don't carry that mindset into marriage or into the courtship that he has for you. You can ask you can ask God for that type of deliverance. And remember we said now you can ask God for anything. There's nothing too big, too small. And when you bring the the real things like the real things that people don't want to talk about. If you battle with um, masturbation, whether that's, you know, yourself or with toys or anything like that. If you battle with sneaky links, if you battle with um, going to, you know, different sources, different drugs, all of that, no matter what your battle or your struggle is when you're processing going through breakups, you can go to God about it without, you know, I don't know. Some people assume that they are going to go through like a judgment of, just being bashed all the time and yes god will correct you yes god is going to correct you but god also wants to prosper you so he's going to deliver you out of those things but deliverance is a process sometimes people kind of want to microwave their deliverance process and it doesn't work like that it's very crock potish and so <laughs> you know um just like when you're going through a breakup you have to give yourself time to process the emotions, the acceptance of that it's over and that there does not need to be closure, but it's now time to focus on you. It's time mm-hmm. to focus on you, your relationship with God, and picking the pieces back up. And you got to redefine who you are. Because healing is not linear. Like she said, mm-hmm. you know, it's not microwave, it's crock pot. It mm-hmm. takes time. So you make sure, you want to make sure that, you know, you surround yourself with positive people who are positive influence to your life get your tribe you make sure games. you know make sure you got a, a good strong foundation of mm-hmm. people around you that can help uplift you and help motivate you and help pray push for you, you pray for that. you you know when you're going through these troubling times yeah. of a breakup you know it could feel devastating mm-hmm. but you got to remember you know a guy wouldn't put anything on you that you couldn't handle. Right. So just know that there's greater things on the horizon. And it may be hard to see in the moment, but mm-hmm. it gets better. Absolutely. Be sure to surround yourself with people who can uplift you. Yes. It's vital. Now, <laughs> this this is going to be an interesting one because... The I feel like there's a genre, there there are so many genres mm-hmm. or playlists rather. Oh, there's so music. many playlists yeah, yeah, yeah. regarding this topic. Mm-hmm. Breakup music. You know, breakup music it does the complete opposite of what you think it should do. Right. You know, you <laughs> You play breakup music because you're sad and you want something to comfort you in that in that moment of you being sad, but it's not comforting. Like the sound, like it's not a I'm, song. I'm going to tell you what breakup music really does. Break- breakup music. It perpetuates that negative emotion. It almost like drives the knife yeah. deeper into your side of, you know, that feeling of that heartbreak. So it, instead of it driving the knife deep into your side, it drives the knife deeper into your heart almost because yeah, yeah you feel like you're, you know, some songs make you feel empowered about the breakup or whatever. You know, I'm on my, you know, a hot girl summer or whatever. Oh! You know, whatever you, I don't know. Like, Get out of hot girl summer. Whatever you think, you know, that the music is actually doing for you, it's actually doing the opposite. It's actually, you know, perpetuating that toxic, you know, emotion that you get when you are broken up with. You're hurt. You feel like you're abandoned. You know, a lot of the music nowadays is geared towards sad like sad undertones and yeah you know just you know it's not really you know people are like you know glorifying glorify wow glorify glorify glorifying suicide and you know doing all these bad and sad things that you know i feel like i'm rambling right now but no because like look let's get real with it okay (laughs) so here it is you 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 listening to Summer Walker? You don't went through your breakup, sliding down the wall, crying, sliding in the sitting in the shower, crying because the the reason why is because you have this music that is feeding the negative emotion. It's not helping you through it; it's feeding it. So this is the emotion that you're trying to process, but you keep 
it's almost like you're procrastinating the progress by listening to music that's pushing you backwards and not forwards. Mm -hmm. So you have to find an uplifting playlist. Now, you know, for some of you that, you know, sometimes you, you know, you mix your R&B with your gospel, you know, try to find music that's, that's driving, pumping. Try to find music that, you know, feel good music. You know, for me, sometimes I go back to the 90s. Sometimes I go back 70s. Sometimes I go back 80s and everything like that. But I try to find music that is uplifting, especially if I'm going through my good gospel playlist. I need something that's going to um, pour into me. I need something that's going to pour into me. I need something because I got to cry it out. I need something that's going to pour into me. And so... With music today, it's literally feeding the spirit. You know, it's, it's feeding the spirit in different ways because you got to remember your ears are a gate. They're like a spiritual gate, just like how you have an open door, open, you know, your ears are a spiritual gate. And so the music that you're feeding your spirit, it affects everything. So if you're listening to sad music all the time, it's time for you to finally be around some people, get around some friends and you just had nothing but breakup music in your ear all night long, all during the day. And so you're feeling kind of down. You need something that's going to, you know, pump you up, fuel you up and everything like that. Music is so important. Music is one of the biggest influences in our culture. Yeah. And like, you know, for instance, I'll give you an example of what my situation was when I went through a breakup. I had a playlist through Spotify because I use Spotify. So, um... The crazy thing about it was Spotify knew I was going through a breakup based on the algorithm of the music that I was playing. So it started Ooh. to recommend more and more and more and more Ooh. breakup music. And it, at the end of the year, it creates a year end recap of what you listen to, like your top hits, your top songs or whatever. And it, it made <laughs> a playlist called The One That Got Away. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Spotify. Yeah. Party. So, Wee. kid you not, you know that playlist. A lot of the songs that I had saved in my personal library did not age well because once I became, once I healed out of that that space that I was in, you know, I looked back at my playlist and you know my wife was starting to hear some of the music because I hadn't gotten rid of everything, and my wife was starting to hear some of the music. She was like, um. Yeah, I was like, boy, what kind of place was you in? What good God? I'm talking dark. about the music was dark, y'all. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about, I'm, I used to see shadows in my room. Like, well, no, 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 it wasn't. It wasn't that song, <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, the music, the music was dark. And, you know, of course, because I'm a musician, I pay attention to things like color, tonality, um, mm -hmm. chords, um, music, certain, certain chord combinations give off a certain tone. And, of course, you know, producers, when they put this music together, for those that are, um, musicians, you understand this as well, that music produces color, produces a sound that emotes, you know, a certain feeling that you want your listener to have. And so a lot of breakup music doesn't use something, you know, positive and upbeat. They're not using, you know, um, certain keys that provoke a person to want to get up and dance. You have to start connecting with things that make you happy as you're processing your breakup. You have to start connecting with um, new hobbies. You have to start, you know, it's time to Re get on up. Rediscover yourself. It yeah, is important to yourself. rediscover yourself. Find out who you are in your single season. Explore new hobbies. Try new things. Yes. Do not be, <laughs> do not be afraid to get out there and explore. No. Get, no, I'm sorry. Get out. <laughs> Get out of here. Wanna, get out the bed. I don't want to plug my own, my own little YouTube channel. But he, anyway. did, he did throw a YouTube <laughs> channel here. But, but no, nah, yeah. like, it's, it's okay to try new things. It's okay to, you know, like, seriously, that's one of the things that kind of helped me because um, when I felt like I was, you know, going through it, mm -hmm. I would get out and hike. That's kind of the reason why I started to get out and explore. And, you know, why, you know, we both go hiking. We both go hiking now to clear our heads and just to get out and just see something different because being inside these water. four walls and yeah, yeah, we love being by waterfalls yes. and streams and rivers and all that and beaches, you know, that type of stuff. So, um, like I said earlier, um, do not allow yourself to go back to any rebounds or like do not, do not allow Don't yourself to rebounds. find 
a rebound because you are sad and you're lonely and you're, you know, you just feel like you need someone to be there for you. That is using people. That that is. I'm, I yes. don't care what nobody says. <laughs> you going and finding a rebound. You are using hurt people. Hurt people. And people think mm-hmm. it's something that's. Oh, I'm just finding someone to help me get through. You are using them. You are using them to to soothe the pain of someone else instead of you going through the healing process. It's like. It's like baking cookies and then you want to take the cookies out early and wonder why you're getting this soft, smushy, you know. Please finish your process. <laughs> please. Please finish your process. So Don't you're not out, so cookie. you're not out here just soft bashing someone else that wants a complete product. Okay? So okay, please get complete. But for real, for real, when you're going through okay, so let me let me touch you on this. If you are in a position where you have to see your ex, um, whether it's at work, that which is terrible, whether it's at work or whether you have to <laughs> live with them or you're in a situation where you have to pass them and everything. This is going to be difficult, okay? Being cordial is semi-easy, right? Mm. When the pain is fresh, it's not as easy, but as you're processing, it gets a little bit easier as you're picking yourself up and as God is taking you through your healing journey and you're learning how to manage your heartbreak and mm-hmm. everything. If you're in a position where you have to see them, do not take revenge. No. Do not be a petty label. No. Okay. As tempting as it may be, do don't do it. Do not do it. Instead, you are going to have to love your enemy. I know you're like, oh, I don't want to. They hurt me. They broke me. But okay. remember what we said earlier. Kill them with kindness. Do it with kindness. So scripture says, this is Luke 6, 35, but love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Ooh, that's a hard one. Ooh, that's a hard one. Do good and lend. Uh huh. And expect nothing in return. Talk about it. And your reward will be great. So guess what? Mm-hmm. In loving your enemies, and which means not saying you going and loving on your ex. That does not. That's not what that means. No, we're not telling. You, like we're we said, saying, don't go be, back. Being kind and being nice in a situation where you're angry and you're frustrated. They know you're angry and frustrated. You don't have to voice it. You don't have to voice it. They know it. But it says your reward will be great and you will be sons of the most high for he is kind to the grateful and the evil. So you have to think what kind of like the heart of Christ with the, you know, with the heart of God, like God loves those that are kind and those that are evil. That's a hard job. And I, boy, I commend God for it. But in the process of you having to deal with seeing an ex and everything like that. That doesn't mean you open a conversation for ease of access to soothe that part of you in hopes of getting back together. No. No open doors. No. What it means is that you do a, you can do a simple high and by. You can do a simple head nod and keep it moving. You keep it moving. It does not mean, okay, you, you have to find... If, and if you work with them, see if there's a possibility if you can work from home or be transferred to another transfer department. Or something. <laughs> something. Okay. Ask God to go in and make that disconnect for you and open a new door where it assists in your healing journey. You know, God isn't going to keep you in a place where you can, you know, reconnect to your soul tie. Like, no, God is going to put you in a place where it's time for you to heal so you can overcome. Right. You know? Now, you also have to this is this is vital this is very vital you have to learn how to be kind to yourself you have to learn how to love on yourself mm-hmm. we don't mean the kind of loving on yourself that is inappropriate uh, we're talking about the loving on yourself as in you can take yourself out on a date like you can mm-hmm. you know go hiking like like i said hiking is pretty cool now if you're a woman you know i can Ladies, understand you know- like to get our hair done to feel good get our nails done go get us a new outfit you know you know do something that is picking yourself up and you know something that really caters to what you like you can ask god to show you what new things can you fall in love with you can ask god how to love you in a new way you can um ask god you know what is it that you know what is it that i love now show me new things about myself that i never knew 
And you know, you can really, 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 really like pick on up because ladies, you know, sometimes when we go through, we'll be quick to have a red hair phase. We'll change hair colors, new outfits, all of that. This does not mean that you self-destruct. Mm -mm. And if you need a therapist, please find one. If you need spiritual guidance, go to, you know, your pastors or find a mentor. Um, one of my most amazing mentors is Dr. Teresa Goggins. She has this... um amazing amazing program called open door mentoring and she delves into you know different mountains of influence whether it's ministry marriage or marketplace but in those sessions it feels like you are sitting with the holy spirit and even the things you don't want to talk about you have to delve into those things that have been hidden under the carpet or sweeped under the rug because mm -hmm. it really assists in your your life purpose and finding out who you are sometimes you need to find out why were you created you know, we were you were hindered and blinded by that relationship so much that you forgot your purpose in life. You forgot why you were created. And that's a big part of picking up your self-esteem when you're overcoming a breakup. Mm -hmm. Like it's a big part of defining who are you? Who are you? You know? Mm, yeah. Yes. Now, here's another good one. <laughs> You know, when you get into really these, when you get into these relationships, right? Sometimes you get close with a, fa a family member, some of their friends, their parents, and it can be hard to let go because you might have formed a really great relationship with either their parents, their brother, their sister, whatever, mm -hmm. cousin, whatever, friend, family member, something like that. They gotta go too. <laughs> you can't keep them either like they have to go you cannot hold on to those people because that is a gateway to that person who you are no longer with yeah so and, you have to be really careful with um relationships with family because there's there's sides you know there's mm -hmm. sometimes family members take the side of who they're closest to and other times family members will correct those that they're closest to. So you never know how it's going to go. But just to kind of, you know, close things off, you can go ahead and just say, you know, um, thank you for the time that I've gotten to know you. You know, thank you for being a great support of, you know, the relationship and everything. And, you know, as you know, I'm moving forward, you know, I give you the best wishes of life and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and if God choose, if it's in God's will for you to stay connected to that family member. Now, it yeah. has to be God's will and not your desire to get uh -huh. back with the ex. You know, a lot of times our relationships were not God's will. It that was it our has flesh. to be a pure intent. Right. Um, and a lot of times our relationships are not formed with a pure intent. It's formed out of lust. It's not even formed out of love. Um, it's, <laughs> it's formed out of it's formed out of lust. It's not. Talk about it, it doesn't have the basis of. Um, and we didn't. The thing is, is, you didn't even seek God about that relationship all the way. Like you brought God in when things got rough. You didn't even introduce the idea to God first. You didn't even... And the thing is, it's like you're supposed to pray about everything. Scripture mm -hmm. says pray about everything, relationships included. And I think what it is is sometimes we get an attitude with God when we ask God about a relationship and God says no or God gives indicator that it's a no. And we get yeah. an attitude with God and be like, oh, I'm just going to do it anyway. Oh, I can, like look, I can look past kid, that. Like a disobedient child like disobeying what their parents said like you told me you told me not to do that okay i'm gonna go and do it yeah, yeah. And, you know god like i said god gives you discernment if you ask god like should i be with this person and god starts kind of showing you the the nose and then all of a sudden you know you you done built that soul tie and let me tell you soul ties are not just created by sex a lot of people are just like, oh, it's just, you know, what if I didn't sleep with them? Or what if I was a virgin? Well, guess what? Your soul tie was through conversation. Your soul tie was through conversation. So intertwined. Right. Some people call it trauma bonding. Right. And others when. OK, when you go through that stage of butterflies in the stomach. I would like to call those um, spiritual bonding moments. It's those are moments where you're starting to 
ease on over in the soul time in conversations you're starting to get butterflies in your stomach when they call you falling down the steps getting ready to answer the phone because you you don't want to let a ring on the third ring mm -hmm. or you're starting to set ringtones you putting emojis next to the names you're starting to you know you get bubbly inside out of nowhere you're starting to go through the social media for a long time and starting to save pictures and starting to remember <laughs> you're starting to do you're starting to do a lot of things <laughs> and in that stage that's where your soul is a open book and that is where that soul tie is being formed being formed mm -hmm. instead of in that moment that's where you're actually supposed to communicate with god and understanding is this what i'm supposed to be connected to when you start to get into those early stages that's where you have to, and you have to be okay with the answer a lot of times we don't want to accept no we don't want no, no. Like a little kid. We don't want to be told no. What you mean I can't have him? What you mean I can't have her? But, but she yeah. fine. But he fine. I don't see nothing wrong. Ain't nothing wrong. And the red flags be There's a lot. evident. A lot loud. Like loud red flags that we try to look past and nurture. And then next thing you know, you're, you're trying to raise someone's son. Or next thing you know, you're trying to be the dad to the girl with the daddy issue. And you're stepping in a place, or you end up being put in God's place, which that's got to suck that you end up becoming someone's idol. Ooh. <laughs> or, and then somebody puts you on a pedestal, mm -hmm. or, you know, you put someone else on a pedestal, and then, yeah, been there, done that. Yeah. And so you have to, you know, allow yourself to process those emotions and be able to sit down. You know, this is the perfect time. If you don't have a journal, it's time to get into it. I absolutely love journaling. And this is the time where you do that. And for people who need the therapy, it's okay to have therapy in Jesus. Okay? It's okay to have therapy in Jesus. And, you know, as a matter of fact, your girl's going to, you know, get back on the route to go ahead and get this master's. Because I, I got to help those in the relationships, you know, premarital and You said it, you know, you got to do it. Right. And so, listen, y'all, B will be on that journey. Because when I do my graduation photo shoot, I got I'm excited. I'm you about, already I, know what's up. I'm excited. But All right. um, I'm more so excited about, you know, being able to help those process through um, heartbreaks and traumas and, you know, couples who desire, you know, kingdom marriage and everything like that. Or just, you know, desire to um, find purpose within love and stuff like that. So um, the biggest thing that I wanted to um, give someone or anyone that may be battling that, you know, feels like therapy costs too much. Um, there are low cost and even free virtual therapy services. So if you um, are in need of that or feel like, you know, it's time for me to start doing something different to pick myself up. There's eTherapy Pro, there's I Prevail, there's TikTok Too, there's Blot Therapy and CIMHS. I'll drop that oh, in the description <laughs> down below um those different virtual therapy services that can really help you in your journey because sometimes we just really really need it but yeah so let me ask you a question let me ask y'all a question yeah how do y'all feel when somebody tells y'all to just get over it like just get over the breakup like it, it's done it's over like how does that really make you feel disrespected um mm -hmm. it's almost like you're insensitive to the fact that i just got wounded like it's, it's almost like i just took a gunshot wound i'm bleeding and it's almost like you're you're watching me bleed and you're like i'll oh, just get a band-aid when it's almost like you're demeaning and you're you're belittling my trauma Mm -hmm. And you're you're belittling not only that, but you're just like, oh, it's nothing. You can get over it. It's 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 very insensitive, um, and you know it's not sympathetic at all. Right now, of course, you're not supposed to wallow in whatever it is that you're going through, mm -hmm. but you also don't want to rush the process of healing yeah. because again, healing is not linear. It's all over the place. It can be messy. It's, it can be real ugly. And you have to allow yourself to go through those phases. Yeah. And, and it's a deliverance process. You know, you have to allow it's, the It's whole a healthy process. Right. It's a, it's a healthy process. And you have to allow um, the Holy Spirit to be able to come in and, you know, 
allow that deliverance to take place because now when you do that self-reflection, you're now going to be able to look at, okay, what were my bad habits? Mm -hmm. Um, what were things about myself that I needed to work on, but I need that extra help from God. I need that extra, um, deliverance to be able to come in because I don't want to hurt the next person, or I don't want to hurt anyone close to, because sometimes you got to go back and apologize to your support system. If you push them away because of that um, yeah. relationship, mm -hmm. if you've hurt somebody that's in your circle or you hurt somebody who really, really, really supported you was, I'm talking about they ride or die for you. Yeah. So if you hurt someone that absolutely has been so supportive of you, but that relationship might've damaged that bridge, you have to go back and fix that because Ultimately, at the end of the day, all they wanted to do was love you and mm -hmm. all they wanted to do was support you and everything. And if you feel like that you don't have anyone or that no one is there, I guarantee you there are. There are. And it's OK to ask God to give you new friends and it's OK to ask God to show you who your ordained friends are. In the process, you know, when I went through a really hard breakup, um, God gave me my best friend, Tay. And when I tell you, I thank God daily for that woman. Ooh, she is so awesome. But in the process, I lost friends before, you know, she became my best friend. And that was hard to lose a tribe, but to gain a best friend that, you know, is going to ride with you till, you know, rapture, baby. So I, uh, and to tell you, if you're watching this, I absolutely love, 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 love you. Me and her have a podcast. Tata. Yes, we call it Tata Ty. Uh, we have a podcast called Netflix and Heal for the women that are going through heartbreak and they need an episode about some of the craziest topics that are taboo within today's society. And, you know, for churches that are a little scared to talk about it, mm -hmm. go check it out. It'll be dropped in the description below and everything. But yeah. So um, for those of you that um, are going through the heartbreak and you are in the process where you are feeling depressed and battling suicide, um, if you're watching this, this is your confirmation not to do it. There's Don't too much it. purpose in your life and you know you may be going through um a hardship you choosing suicide is allowing the enemy to win and allowing those that are looking down on you to win no you're not gonna let them win no so we speak life over you we speak love over you and we're in your corner mm -hmm. even if we don't know you and you don't know us Guess what? You got somebody that's praying for you and supporting you and rooting for you today. I want you to redefine who you are. Take some time. Close yourself off. Talk to God. Get rid of the vices. You know, if you got a little hymn by a little wine and everything, because a lot of people like to use this one, right? A lot of people like to say, well, they drank wine in the Bible. The Bible just says don't get drunk. It didn't say anything about not drinking. Talk why, about it. Why in the world are if you can't? Okay. I'm going to help you right now. I'm going to help y'all right now that like to be like, oh, it didn't talk about weed in the Bible, so you can burn it. Oh, it didn't say nothing about sage and crystals, so you can use it. It didn't say nothing about um, masturbation, so you can do it. If you cannot tell a child to go and do this, you shouldn't do this. If and for you, those who are telling kids to go masturbate, but, yo... <laughs> What is wrong? Yo, I'm, but I'm so serious. When it comes to people try to find excuses to, you know, to do their favorite sin, whether it's drinking. And the thing is, is like people are quick to be like, oh, well, they drank in the Bible. But guess what? You're you're drinking to escape something. And then some people try to do the, oh, I know my limit. How do you know your limit? And we're OK with buildings that say. Wine and spirits. It's y'all, it's clear as day. And then you want to play dumb when it comes to God. But you don't play dumb when you out in the streets with it. Like, I don't get it. You got street smarts, but then you want to act dumb when you get to God. And I don't want nobody thinking, oh, she thinks she high and mighty. Baby, what I used to drink under the table. Slaughter. What? Look at this. I had to recover that some, liver. There's I gonna was be a some mess. people in the conversation. <laughs> I know my limit. What you talking about? <laughs> but if the thing is, is that alcoholism is a spirit and the way that you invite that spirit in is through the access of is alcohol you drink, baby you drink. then Don't you're drink. allowing you're literally allowing that spirit into the body and it 
it's clear as day if we see it on buildings that say one okay i'm sorry i'm get, i'm getting into that but the point is is that when you're going through your breakup turning to sin does not help your spirit grow it nope. destroys it 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 really you know takes you through like a path of destruction and everything and so even though your wound may feel like it's fresh you have to take that time and heal which means um if you got to go on a social media hiatus it's worth it it's so worth it it is so so worth it if you got to clean up that social media remove the pictures the posts and things like that take your time and do it it's okay um the way you manage your heartbreak is by um connecting with things that make you happy connecting with god um cultivating that relationship because you can't be this version anymore the the version of you that's broken that's you know that's been um you know torn apart and you've been looking through this cracked lens at everything You've been perceiving the world and yourself through this broken lens. So now it's time to go get a new prescription and let God clean this eyesight up, this spirit, all of that. So all in all, yeah, we say all of this information. And thank you so much for being with us for Yay. yet another hour. It seems like this is going <laughs> to be the norm because we're very long-winded people and we could talk for hours. Man, it's a podcast. You know but, how it goes down. You know, we're not going to be talking for... Three and four. Well, I can't say that because well, I don't know. That that sounds very conference. Uh, yeah, that's that sound like more <laughs> like a conference, and we ain't having a living room conference. But no, um, not unless we go through another lockdown, which I feel like that's coming. But I'm gonna leave that alone. Keep your Anyways, mask on. Wash your hands. Yes, wash your nasty hands. <laughs> but I'm gonna look directly into the camera when I say this, because I'm saying this to a certain someone. I know you out here looking. You watching? Stop going back to your ex. Oh, boy. This could be, this could Stop be many people. Stop going back. This is for many people, but <laughs> I know who am I. I know in my mind who this is for. Stop going back to your ex. <laughs> Seriously. Because um, I'm tired of telling you the same old thing over and over again. But I do it because I love you. I do it out of love because I was once in your shoes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We've all been there. I was in your We shoes, all girl. think that, you know, we can go back at some point. Maybe once I've healed enough, I can go back to that. Don't what did we do say it. earlier? That's so damaging. Don't do no, that. don't do that to don't yourself. Do Allow sense. yourself to grow. Yes. Allow yourself to grow. Yeah. You must grow. Okay? And the Wakanda is going on. <laughs> you must grow. You must allow yourself to grow oh, and to heal. Gosh. You cannot be a real man if you do not heal yourself. <laughs> All right, let me stop. Jeez. But no, seriously, <laughs> like, you got to um, you got to build your relationship with God and, you know, allow God to help you through everything. Yes. Yes. Ma you, you know, you can you can talk to man about, you know, what your problems are. And I don't necessarily say men. I mean, that metaphorically, you yeah. can talk to your friend, your guy friend, or if you have a female friend or whatever, mm -hmm. but it's important to establish that relationship with God and to understand what his voice sounds like so you can really get some insight and some intel on a situation before you even walk into it. Mm -hmm. God will give you the discernment to see, okay, this ain't for me. Maybe I should um, exit stage left. Yeah. You know, that was right, but, you know, left. We Exit understand. Stays left. So you want to make sure that you can be in the soberest of minds. Be sober-minded. That's yeah, scripture. Yeah, you. You. Yes, uh -huh. yes, okay. Yes, you. The soberest of minds. <laughs> oh, my god. I'm gosh. trying to get through. I'm, tr I'm really trying to get through to the people because there's some people out here that's hard-headed. And I'm more so talking about, and you know. And that's where... God can step in where we can't. <laughs> yeah, I'm also talking to the um, the people that I know that I've been, you know, talking to. So for those of you around the world that are tuning in, <laughs> we thank you so much for tuning into our podcast today. If you haven't done so already, like, comment, subscribe, and share. Hit the notification bell so you can get an update every time we upload a new freck episode. Yes, sir. And it is CG signing out. B-Dub, out. Live a life of abundance. Bye. Peace.